Welcome back to the Automation Podcast. My name is Sean Tierney, and today on the show, I meet up with Dennis Gonzalez from ProSoft to learn all about their new Data Highway Plus and Remote I.O. to Ethernet Gateway. Dennis, thanks for coming on the Automation Podcast. I'm excited to learn all about what's new with ProSoft. And uh, But before we jump into your presentation, can you uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Uh, most definitely, Sean. Uh, my name is Dennis Gonzalez. Uh, I am the product manager for protocol conversion, smart building, and modernization solutions. Um, a little bit more about myself. Um, I have worked in manufacturing and industrial automation for over 30 years, uh, 20 of them working for ProSoft technology. Uh, prior to being a product manager, I was part of the engineering department, uh, working as a test engineer, uh, testing our protocol conversion gateways. Today, I will be spending 30 minutes or so talking about our migration solutions. Yeah, and I think the reason, just so the audience knows, first of all, if you haven't heard, ProSoft was purchased by Belden. That's why Dennis's email on the screen. Of course, if you're listening, you don't see this, but his actual email is at Belden, not at ProSoft. So just a little history there. But the second thing I wanted to throw out there, too, is kind of how we, we, we got together and met was because uh, there was a news story I covered on the morning show about your latest and greatest, uh, you know, uh, converter, right? And so I had used those back when they first came out, and um, I was really wanting to know more about it. So I just want to thank you for uh, accepting my request to come on the show and talk about these products. Oh, you are most definitely welcome, uh, Sean. Um, yes, uh, we do have a new solution, which I'll be going more in depth. But uh, let's let's get going with the agenda. Mm -hmm. Uh, first, I would like to give a quick company overview. Who is ProSoft? For those of you that you don't know, um, the solutions we offer. I will touch on our protocol converters, uh, remote connectivity, and our industrial wireless radios. Um, but the focus is going to be modernization and migration solutions. Provide a couple actual applications where our solutions help customers uh, modernize their systems. And then I will you know, talk about our new Annex 4 ABDH Rio. Finally, I'll wrap it up with some key takeaways. Uh, well, let's uh, let's get started. Uh, ProSoft has been providing communication solutions for over 30 years, uh, from our protocol conversion gateways to industrial radios to remote connectivity. Our goal has been to increase the automation performance of your systems. This allows customers to raise productivity while reducing costs. Our modernization gateways um, help achieve our goal by decreasing downtime uh, while providing flexibility. Uh, customers can update their equipment in a phased manner, uh, one note at a time, if, uh, if that's what they want. Well, let's talk about two of our solutions. Remote connectivity to industrial assets is a game changer. Being able to access your PLC remotely saves you time and traveling costs. One can be here in California, like myself, and know what is going on um, with the system across the country, uh, like in Boston. Uh, this is a great benefit for end users, machine builders, system integrators, just being able to um, get to know what is going on with the equipment anywhere in the world. Uh, we offer safe and secure um, to connect to remote sites via secure remote access or a persistent data network. Our industrial wireless uh, radios uh, support ultra-fast roaming. This makes it possible for a reliable run. Uh, and like if you want to run an industrial safety network like ProfiSafe, SIP safety over wireless, uh, this is especially important for moving applications uh, such amusement parks, automotive factory lines, uh, or warehouses that are using automated guided vehicles or AGVs. Now, for the audio audience, I know you can't see this, but that ultra fast roaming Dennis is talking about, that's 10 milliseconds or less. That's fast. Yes. Go ahead, Dennis. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. No, no worries, no worries. I appreciate you, you know, stopping me and letting me know, you know, because this is, you know, it's very important. Our protocol conversion gateways provides a means of 
to read or write data from devices using the similar protocols. Let me give you an example. If you want to get your process information from an Ethernet IP controller and send that information to a SCADA system uh, via DMP protocol, we have a solution for you. We have over 160 real-time protocol conversion combinations. Uh, we also have smart building solutions uh, where information from sensors, generators, HVAC, uh, can be monitored or controlled using BACnet IP, MetaSysN2, or BACnet S MSTP protocols. I could spend over an hour just talking about the many combinations for the different applications we support. But today, I will spend the rest of the time talking about our migration solutions. Our modernization solutions helps uh, communication between Ethernet-based processors with legacy equipment, such PLCs, uh, panel view terminals, drives, flex IO, all this type of equipment that can be found uh, on a data highway plus or a remote, remote IO network. When you think modernization, you probably visualizing a major project to remove all systems and replace them with new ones and extend the downtime, profit losses, the stuff you don't even want to think about. Uh, there's another option, doing a phase migration on your legacy equipment where you can update your system on your own time, minimizing the cost and the impact on your operation. Uh, PROSA has a variety of modernization solutions, or either an IP to GE, Genius Gateway, this gateway creates the scan list and associates them to tags in your IS Logix 5000 controller. Do you have a GE IO device that you want to control using an Ethernet IP processor, or you want to replace your 9030 processor? This is the gateway that, you know, this is the solution for you. We also have the Ethernet to Modicon gateway. Our Modicon gateway allows us to monitor or control S908 IO devices. Uh, with Ethernet IP processors. Here it is followed with the Ethernet IP to text T, Texas Instrument. Is there a T, TI-505 that you need to control? Um, this, T, this TI gateway also provides automatic uh, creation of the remote IO list and generates the tags associated with your uh, RS Logix 5000 control log controller or a compact um, controller as well. You want to update the Atomax DTS. We have a solution for you. Last but not least, the Ethernet IP to Adam Bradley Remote IO or DH plus Data Highway Plus. This is the solution that I will be focusing the rest of the presentation. How to migrate equipment using Data Highway Plus or Remote I.O. You have a Remote I.O. network that is running fine, but it's comprised of all their hardware, hardware that has been discontinued and parts are just hard to find. Doing a rip and replace is way too expensive. Our solution enables the customer to deploy an Ethernet-based system in conjunction uh, with the existing Remote I.O. or Data Highway Plus network. This allows the user to upgrade the legacy panel views, uh, their flex IO or drives, or even the processor, the PL old PLC5. Basically upgrading um, your control system can now be done one node at a time and uh, during your scheduled downtime. Yeah, and this is not just your old racks of IOs, like Dennis says. This is for really anything that's sitting on remote IO. So it could be a VFT, you know, it could be an old panel view, one of those old original panel views or panel view 1200s, 1400Ds and whatnot, even a standard panel view or a panel view plus, although I wouldn't do a panel view plus, but or old slick 500s. Um, yeah, so I think it's not just your 1771 IO, it's really because of the way remote IO works, it's really anything that's sitting on remote IO on the remote IO side, and then really anything that's talking data highway plus on the data highway plus side. 
That's exactly right, Sean. So as Sean was saying, what are the benefits, you know, of, of, of uh, migrating instead of uh, rip and replace, you know? Before we get to that, I have a special announcement. I've just released my very first book. It's an ebook and it's entitled Logic's Book of Knowledge. What I did is I combined all my Control Logics articles from the last 10 years into an ebook. I updated them, I added new pictures, and I made it all available for just $9.99. So if you appreciate what I'm doing, if you want to support the show and the channel and the blog, then please check out my brand new ebook, Logic's Book of Knowledge, which you can get over at the automationblog.com forward slash BOK1. You're extending the life of, the life of your assets. Uh, by connecting to your uh, legacy devices. ProSoft solutions help plants connect rather than replace the legacy equipment. Like I said, this saves you time and money. Next, I would like to take a couple of minutes and go over an actual application where our solution helped the customer uh, with their migration. In the first case, um, the customer wanted to pull from 16 PLC5 processors and send that information to a control logic P8 and IP protocol. The issue was the communication between the two processors. The control logic is an Ethernet based controller, and the PLC5 only communicates uh, using serial either DH plus or remote IO. Well, our solution helped gather the data without changing the existing hardware, the wiring, and most importantly, the PLC program. Uh, this is an actual DH plus application. Uh, the next one, this is our, our second case, it's a Rio application. Uh, in this case, a brewery decided to upgrade the very old PLC2 controller to newer compact logic controller. And then one that replaced the 1771 remote racks. So one of the biggest hurdle was time. They only had a few days to do it. Our solution gateway allowed a great level of flexibility. So the different racks could be moved onto Ethernet IP network and can be controlled by different PLCs if necessary. These are just two samples where our solutions have helped customers migrate their systems. Next, I will talk about our new Annex X4 ABDH Rio. Okay, to the left is the hardware specs. Uh, basically, you have a power connector, an Ethernet port, and a three-pin network connector uh, that can be communicated either uh, DH plus or remote I/O, Bluehost, you name it, whichever network you're in. Uh, to the right, there is a full functionalities uh, that will go over in the next few slides. But the biggest uh, thing to remember is that you do not need to touch the PLC code. This saves engineering time while you're doing the migrating. Now, you know, I want to jump in here for a second, Dennis. You know, one of the things that in the first application example, you talked about the Ethernet, the data highway. I think one of the things people will say, well, Sean, Dennis, I could have just put a control logic gateway out there. And that's true. But here's the thing. You would need room for a four slot rack, a power supply, an Ethernet card, and a data highway plus card, if you can still get the data highway plus card. That's a lot, that's that's expensive, and it's a lot of space. This little ANX4, this is about, for those who are listening, it's about the size of your typical I.O. card, your Control Logics I.O. card, and uh, then rail mountable if you want to, and um, so it takes up a lot less space in it. The price, I mean, this is not the same price as two network cards, a chassis, and a power supply. So there are times when putting this in is actually preferred over trying to put it now again if you have 20 d each plus runs coming back to your office then yeah maybe a chassis with a bunch of modules is makes sense but um in most cases that's not going to be how your system's laid out so dropping these in with you have ethernet and data Highway plus or ethernet and remote io can be a better solution than trying to put a gateway everywhere so i just wanted to throw that out there dennis Oh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I'm glad you did uh, mention those because yes, uh, there there's other options, and in the long run, it's it could it'll, it'll cost you way more than than uh, a simple gateway. Yeah. Well, the first sample that I I got 
is uh, you want to program your PLC or SLC using this gateway. Basically, you got a terminal that you know is communicating to your um, Ethernet IP network, and then you have on the other side you could access whatever you have on the uh, either an SLC, a PLC five, PLC two, whatever uh, is on the DH plus network. Use you know you can access and program. It supports the older bar rates, 57.6. It's up to the new one, the 230K. And I think an important thing on this slide is this works through RS Link. So you're going to see it's going to look like a real gateway in RS Links. So you're going to see Ethernet coming in, and then you're going to see DH Plus coming out. You're going to see all your devices on DH Plus. Exactly. An example, I just want to uh, emphasize how, you know, the you want to upgrade a panel view, an old panel view to the new panel view plus a six or panel view plus seven, you know, without changing your PLC code. Uh, it is, it, this one supports up to eight panel views on the same network. Yeah, so this would be like, let's say all you can get is a panel view plus seven. You know, all that has is Ethernet, right? But you, Correct. your old panel view was talking DH plus to your PLC fives or just like 504s, right? So now we're using the same ANX4 in reverse, where it's the not the not the PC that's talking through Ethernet, but it's the panel view talking through Ethernet to the Data Highway Plus network. So that can be a great, you know, I know there have been several situations where people can only get the panel view plus seven, so there's no DH plus option on it. So this is an option. You know, I don't, Dennis, I don't actually think I've used it this way before. But uh, this would be something we may want to get like a tech note or something to share with the audience after the fact. Almost oh, definitely. We'll, you know, we could get that going. Uh, but this is a, a common, it's, a, you know, they want to upgrade all uh, order terminals and the older terminals do not support Ethernet. So what do they do? Basically buy a new panel, view plus and uh, connect to our gateway and up and running with no code changes. The next mode that I wanted to discuss is um, where the, uh, the gateway is collecting data from a legacy five, I mean, legacy SLC 500 or legacy PLC five uh, using it in an IP controller and bringing that information to a uh, control logic 5000 or a compact logics. Um, this is same setup was highlighted in the actual customer application where the customer is pulling information from uh, the 16 PLC fives and uh, all getting all that information into one controller. And finally, um, the last one is basically similar to the DH plus. This time we're uh, upgrading a panel view plus. Um, using the Bluehost or real um, communications. Yeah, and this one I think would probably be the trickiest to do. So you got a PLC5 or a Slick 500, but more than likely a PLC5. And on its uh, blue hose, it used to talk to a, you know, a legacy panel view on remote IO, which were always painful to program. But now you can actually put the ANX4 in and put a panel view plus on Ethernet and have it mapped to the old remote IO where the old remote IO panel view used to be. So you can, you don't have to change. And this, the big thing here is not having to change the program in your PLC five, right? It exactly. was block transferring to a panel view and maybe rack five group zero through seven. And you don't want to change that, but you do have to replace the old screen. Maybe it's broken. Maybe somebody put the, put a hammer through it. So how do you, how do you take a new panel view plus seven or six and on ethernet and have it emulate that old uh, remote IO panel view. And this is a great way, this is a great way to do that. And this is another one where we'd probably want to share a tech note with our audience on, you know, how do you actually go about doing that? Uh, most definitely, most definitely. Thank you, Sean. Uh, I really appreciate the feedback you provided. Many applications are uh, using legacy equipment that communicate using serial protocols like Data Highway Plus and Remote IO. Migrating all that equipment in a large operation can be quite expensive and time consuming. Uh, water and wastewater, uh, for example, their networks uh, use DH plus and remote IO to communicate to BLC5s and SLC500s. 
but other applications such paper mills, breweries, mining operations have distinct type of networks. Our solution allows modernization to your operation in a fraction of the cost of a rip and replace project. So why ProSoft? ProSoft has been providing solutions for uh, main communication challenges customer face for over 30 years. We have a top-notch customer technical support team that will help you each step of the way. We have over 160 combination of protocol conversion solutions. Um, when using our Annex 4 ABDH Rio, you do not have to change your code or existing wiring. Uh, this makes it a no-brainer. Couple more slides, Sean. Um, this one, these are the key takeaways, uh, basically. Uh, all PLC5s or Rocco legacy equipment at one point or another uh, need to be updated. So what are the benefits? You're minimizing the downtime by changing one node at a time or two or changing at your own, on your own time on schedule. Uh, it provides uh, production cost savings by increasing your reliability. It's less expensive and it decreases engineering and commissioning time. A decrease in engineering and commissioning time is helpful, but the flexibility that this gateway gives the customer is what is more valuable. The ability to update a process in phases, reducing the need uh, of a rip and replace of, of the equipment, uh, saving CapEx expenditure while reducing time, downtime, makes our solution, like I said, a no-brainer. Equipment migration does not need to be difficult or expensive. Modernize your process in a phased manner and uh, on your own schedule using maintenance budget. You know, and I just want to uh, jump in there too and say, you know, if you have a 12-inch or 15-inch HMI, you're going to replace it, that's thousands of dollars, right? So, that's not maintenance budget friendly, typically. Uh, you know, that's typically a CapEx. Even though, I mean, for an end user, replacing a $5,000 HMI, that's a, that's a huge part of the budget. They typically have to go and get a, that approved. Um, so when you're talking about these devices, you're much less than that. So a lot of times these can be fit in in a quarterly or every, twice a year in the maintenance budget to do things that are more phase migration. I know that's helpful for those end users that are in run mode, they're not in expansion mode, and they just have to keep the plant going and keep making products. So that's where I've seen this was really helpful because they didn't want to spend five grand plus the engineering time to redo the screens, uh, you know, because that's a big project. They wanted to put something in there that was a fraction of the cost that could get the job done and 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 help them you know, take one step at a time. So I just wanted to throw that in. That's what I've seen in my experience. Exactly, exactly. Very wise words, Sean, very wise words. That's exactly, you know, um, what's going on. Um, migrating a whole, you know, operation is is going to cost a lot of money. You know, it, you know, if you want to re rip and replace, it's going to cost way too much. And there's companies that are running 24-7. They cannot, you know, stop the machines because they're losing profits on operations. Mm -hmm. The last slide, uh, this is our North American sales team uh, in the respective regions. Uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to them uh, with any questions about uh, any of our solutions in um, modernization, smart buildings, uh, remote connectivity, or industrial wireless. Um, they'd be more than happy to talk to you uh, if you have any questions. Yeah, some of you may recognize Vic's picture up there. Vic has been on the podcast a couple of times before, and he covers kind of like the Northeast, you know, from, uh, I think he covers all the way from, uh, from uh, parts south all the way up to parts way north, including uh, New York, New England. So uh, that's a friendly face there. And uh, Dennis, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, especially since you're all the way on the West Coast, uh, to come on the show and kind of walk us through that. It's uh, it's a very interesting product. I used the predecessor 
And uh, I know it was very popular back in the day when it first launched. So it's good to see that there's a new version out and that you guys are continuing that support for uh, for doing bridging those uh, legacy DH plus RIO networks. Not that that's all you do. At the beginning, you showed us everything you guys do, including OTI, Modbus, uh, Modicon, you know, GE products. But um, it's good to see that you guys still offer this product. Well, thank you so much for having me, Sean. Um, like you said, uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm glad that you're familiar with our its predecessor. Well, just to give you a little bit of a heads up, this one will support all the functionalities of its predecessor, and eventually we're, we're uh, developing new applications. Was there anything else you want to cover? Just want to leave you with the happy faces of our sales team. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Dennis, for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for, for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I want to thank Dennis for taking time out of his busy schedule to come on the show and bring us up to speed on their newest Data Highway Plus and Remote I.O. to Ethernet Gateway. Now, if you did enjoy this episode, please give us a like and a sub. And if you want to follow me or support the show, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. You'll also find all my training courses over at theautomationschool.com. With that said, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.